for the noon luncheon. We invite you to stay for lunch following the service today. I'm, I've been asked to let you know that the menu is taco soup, so if that may be a little spicy for you, we hope, we hope not, but we hope everyone will stay for lunch following the service. Today, Reverend Biff Averett, who is a retired pastor, 40 years, he's currently the chair of the Board of Ordained Ministry for the Arkansas Conference, he'll be our pastor. I hope that you've been following along in the Never the Same Again devotion this week. If you haven't, the devotions are on the table in the narthex. And be sure and pick one up, and then next week, you will, next Sunday, you'll receive a new devotion. We're also trying to send those out daily on email, and so you can look for them there. If we don't have your email address, please stop by the office and make sure we have it. We're glad that you're here. I invite you to join us as we pray. Lord, we thank you that as we gather here in this holy season of the year, as we journey with you towards the cross of Calvary in this Lenten season, that we make our journey knowing that we're never the same again because of the depth of your love, because of the reality of your grace, because of the gift of your Son, who is Lord and Savior of our life. As we gather here on this beautiful day, we invite your presence to be with us. And it's in the wonderful name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There's a song here that is listed after the pastoral prayer. The song is, say, says, Come to the table of mercy, prepared the wine and the bread. We're going to have a choir practice before we sing that song in a moment because, you know, today we're focusing on the the Last Supper, as we all, all week. And this may be a new song to you. So I'm going to ask Kathy to play through it one time, and then we're going to join in singing so that when we really come to the point in the service where we sing this song, that we know how to sing it. Will you play, Kathy? Thank you. invite you to sing. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation, Receive from his nail scarred hand. Eat of the bread of salvation. Drink of the blood of the Lamb. Thank you. Let us join together now in our call to worship. On the day Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On the day Christ took a towel and washed his disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ our God gave us his holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may proclaim His holy sacrifice and be partakers of His resurrection.
I invite you to be seated. As we prepare to go before the Lord's Son of Grace in prayer, I want to ask you to be in prayer for Vicki Hoy. Vicki's having a hip replacement surgery today, and, and she's possibly still in surgery as we speak. We also, I also ask you to remember Leora McDonald, who is also in the hospital at Mercy, and she's had a pacemaker installed. I invite you now to go with me before the Lord's Son of Grace in prayer. We thank you, Lord God, that as we gather here on this beautiful day, that we can remember the beauty of the meal that you prepared for us as your disciples. When you gathered your disciples with you in the upper room at a table, and you took bread and you broke it and you offered them a cup that was a sign and a symbol of a new covenant that you would make. Father, we thank you that your love is so amazing for us. That you would provide for us in this way. And as we share in this time of remembrance. As we prepare to come together Sunday. And gather around the table of mercy. We ask that you would continually. Give us inspiration and knowledge of the depth of your love for us and the power of forgiveness and salvation. Today we gather and we remember Vicki and we pray for Leora. And we pray for others on our prayer list and those that we know that are in need of prayer in our hearts. We thank you that as we gather and as your word is broken that you will offer us something fresh and new. We pray for Brother Biff now as he brings your word and ask you to bless it. For we pray this in the saving name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join. You can remain seated as we sing together. Come to the table. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation, receive. From his nail scarred hand, eat of the bread of salvation, drink of the blood of the Lamb. I thank you for the opportunity to come and share a few words with you. As we gather on this uh, special time of the Lenten season and as we reflect upon the Lord's Supper, uh, there comes a time in life when you have to have some spectacles to read the scripture. Uh, this is just such a time. I'm reading from the 22nd chapter of Luke. My theme is the place. Hear now this portion of God's holy word. They came to the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed. So Peter sent James and John saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we might come and eat it. And they asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen to me, he said. When you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet him. Follow him to his house. And say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he'll show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Where was the place of the Last Supper? Well, we all know that the place was an upper room, a place where Jesus wanted to share a last meal with his disciples to break bread and to drink. 
So I remind you this morning that before there was a cross that hung on the wall or that hung at Calvary, before there was a resurrection on Easter Sunday, there was a place, a place where Jesus wanted to gather with his disciples for the last time. It's a place that John reminds us is not only a place where he could eat a meal, but John reminds us that as they gathered for the meal, Jesus took a towel, of a basin of water, and he washed the disciples' feet. For he wanted to teach them that we are called to a servant ministry. That it's not only what is in our mouths, in the food of the body and blood of Christ, but in our hands, in the towel, in the basin of water. Jesus spent time in a special place with his special disciples. What difference does a place, place make? Let me suggest some things. First of all, the place Jesus picked was a large upper room. I've had the wonderful privilege of going to Israel and standing in that room that they say might well have been or at least looked like the upper room. The thing that's unique about it, of the upper room, is it's large. It's a huge room, not a teeny-weeny room, but a large room. Now, it wasn't a large room so Leonardo da Vinci could line everybody up on one side of the table and take a picture. It was large to remind us there's room for everyone. We're all invited. None are too important to be invited. None are too unimportant to be left out. We're all important, and there's a place for us at the table of the Lord. I'm reminded of a well-dressed Englishman who went and visited a friend of his in Georgia in the colony back in the 19th century. And while he was there, he, he, he noticed that people didn't know who he was. And so he met one young man, and he said, I want you to know that here in this country of America, I'm a stranger. But back home in England, I'm an important man. As a matter of fact, my name is Sir Francis Wadsworth. I am a Knight of the Garter. I am a knight of the golden fleece, a knight of the eagle, a knight of the round cross. I am somebody important. And then he said to the young man he was speaking to, and who might you be? And the young man, being a young Irishman, pulled himself up proudly, and he said, I'm Michael O'Murphy. I was a knight night before last, and I was the same last night, and I am the same tonight and I'll be the same tomorrow night. How important are we? It doesn't matter whether you're a famous person or an ordinary person. The Last Supper of Jesus reminds us that there's a place at the table for each and every one of us, for the room is large and the setting is ready. How important is the setting? I mean, how important is a classroom to a teacher, an office to a business, an assembly line to a factory or a church building to the education and the development of Christians. The setting's pretty important. So Jesus said, when you make preparations for the last meal, it's an important one because it's a large room that's ready for you. The second thing I like about it is not only was it a large upper room, but Jesus said it was furnished. Somebody had already fixed it up. Now they were to go and see the place so that they would know what they are to bring to the table, but there will be a table there. It's already set up. It's furnished. Now I can still remember, even at my ancient age, what it was like when I moved into my first apartment when my wife and I married. And we had absolutely nothing. I mean, we had a suitcase full of clothes. <coughs> But when we looked around Conway to find a place where we could live, we found a house, and in the back was a room and a bathroom, and it was furnished. I remember that old furniture and the squeaky bed and all of the stuff that was in it. But at least it was furnished. It reminds me that when you're young and you're just starting out, you don't have everything. You need help. Jesus said, when you come to his table, it's already furnished. He's prepared it for you. It's exactly what we need to do. We don't need to worry about adding to it. Now, it was wonderful for me as a young person to have a place furnished. I remember when we had our first child, and we didn't have a clue how to raise a child. But somebody threw a little shower for us. We got a whole bunch of clothes and cloth diapers. 
We thought that was wonderful. We didn't know they had, well, they didn't have them back in those days. All they had was cloth diapers. And they gave us a diaper service for six weeks. We had somebody who came and picked them up, cleaned them. Then after that, we were on our own. But it was wonderful. When we had our first grandchild, they threw a grandchild shower for us. And they brought stuff that we might have because when our children grew up, they had destroyed everything. I mean, we had, everything we had was gone. And so we had to refurbish in order for the grandchildren to feel like they had a place when they came that was furnished and ready for them. The story reminds us over and over again that Jesus says, it's furnished. It's already prepared for you. God has furnished what we need. You remember in Holy Communion, he gives us the bread and the wine, and it reminds us of the gift of his body and blood. I'm reminded of a little boy who went to communion, or, or who was in the confirmation class, and the teacher was asking him, she said, now, what were Jesus' last words that he spoke to people? One little boy held up his hand and he said, I know what it was, I know what it was. And she said, what was it? And he said, I shall serve no wine before it's time. <laughs> now maybe we've had more commercials than we ought to have. But we are reminded every time we break bread and we share the cup that God has furnished what we need. We who were lost and separated from him are brought back into relationship with him. He's furnished what we couldn't do on our own for we only come to the table of Christ as a privilege, not something we earn. And we're there because God made room and he furnished it just for us. Which brings me to the third thing I want to say about the place, and that is not only was it a large upper room and it was fully furnished, but he said to the disciples, now when you go and check it all out, prepare. Make preparations. Do you ever wonder what they did to make preparations? Think they took a tablecloth and put it on the table, or they put candlesticks on it? I suspect all that was there. How do you get ready and prepared? Let me tell you something. When I grew up, my mother taught me how to get ready to come to the table. First thing she taught me was, go to the bathroom and wash your hands. You have dirty hands. I don't know where those hands have been. But before they come to this table, they better be clean. God reminds us when we come to his table that our hearts and our hands need to be cleansed of all the things that we've done. The dirt that's gotten into our lives, the filth that we thought and said and done need to be emptied out. We need to come to the table fresh and clean and ready to receive the gift at the place he has prepared for us. You've got to clean your hands and clean your hearts. And then my mother, before we ever ate a bite, we took those clean hands and we joined hands with everybody else at the table. And we said a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, O oh Lord. May the food be used for our bodies and us to your service. Then we were ready to eat. We had met preparations. One day, two buckets met at the well. One had a smile, the other a frown. The one with a smile said, what's the frown on your face? And the, the bucket with a frown on his face said, every time I leave this place filled, but every time I come back, I'm empty and spent. And then the one with the frown said to the happy bucket, why are you happy? And the happy bucket says, because every time I go out into the world and give away everything I have and I'm empty, I know I can come back to the well and be filled again. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up. Fill it till it overflows into the lives of all around me. God has a place. Our preparation is to receive him into our lives in order that we might share that good news with the world. God calls us to the table and sends us for service. So I close with a little story. There was a woman who had a son and she wanted him to learn how to play the piano. And she thought perhaps the best way she could teach him how to appreciate the piano was to take him to a concert by a famous pianist. 
So she discovered in town that the great master Paderewski was coming to town. And so she took her son to a concert by him. They went in a little bit early and they found their seats and they sat down. And after a few moments, she looked across the aisle and saw a good friend of hers that she hadn't seen in a while. So she got up and she went over and visited with the lady in the other side. In a little while, the lights flickered. It's a sign that they're getting ready for the concert. So she said goodbye to the lady and came back. When she reached her seat, she realized that her son, who was to be sitting next to her, was gone. Well, the lights came down. And then the spotlight came on the stage to the piano. And there at the piano was her son. And there under the spotlight in front of everybody, he began to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Now this woman, who was a very tall woman, began to become a very small woman as she slid down in her seat. And suddenly from the side of the stage came the great artist, Paderewski. He came to the young boy who was playing on the piano and he bent over and he whispered. And then he sat down on the bench next to him. Then he took his left hand and he reached around the boy and he began to play the bass that went with the little twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then with his right hand he reached around the other side and began to play the legato as he played the high end of the scale. Beloved, that's what God is all about when we come to his table. He takes us with all of our weaknesses and all of us as the children of God whom he called to the table and he reaches around us and he holds us and he helps us to do far more than we ever dreamed that we could do because we've come to his table, because we're his children, because he doesn't call people who are all knowing and wise he doesn't call people who simply have the idea of what needs to be done or who are greatly privileged and capable and skilled. He calls ordinary people. He doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. For there is a place for each one of us where God brings us together at his table and we are family called to love, to eat, and to go and serve. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Biff. Biff and I, I had the privilege of working with Biff for six years in my ministry and out of his ministry. And so I'm honored to share my friend with you today. Next week, Karen Parks will be here. She is a Bible study teacher in northwest Arkansas. And, and so she will be sharing as we focus on the Garden of Gethsemane. To close out our service today, we are going to sing the song, Bread of the World. It's hymn number 624. You can find it in your hymnal, and I invite you to please be standing as we sing. Thank you for being here today, and we hope you'll stay for lunch. If
Any of you have got to return back to work, we'll give you a dispensation and let you eat first, okay? I want to pray a blessing over the meal now as you go. Lord, we thank you for the time that we've shared as we focused on your table. And as we prepare now to go to another table in which we will receive nourishment for our bodies so that we may be found faithful in your service. We ask you, Lord, to bless the food as we partake of it, to bless those who have prepared it for us. And Father, send us out into your world so that we have not just come to church, but that we go out to be the church. It's in the wonderful name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. God is good. And all the time. Hope you have a great day. Come and join with us tonight for prayer if you'd like at 6 o'clock.